Hey, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling, and I'm talking about oligopoly and game theory, and this time I really intend to get to the game theory. Last time we uh, described the oligopoly as being a case where there are a few big firms, the firms know each other, and they know that the other firm's behavior is going to affect what will happen if we try to cut price. So imagine Imagine that we have a duopoly that is exactly two firms, sort of like Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, um, back at, when they were uh, trying to compete with each other. So you have a duopoly, two firms, and they might try to act like a cartel. Um, so, you know, maybe. <coughs> Uh, maybe an example would be like a better example would be like oil producers, two big oil producers, and um, you know, so, so they agree on production quotas. So let's and each one has a strategy of either um, cooperating. That is, let's say that my production quota is uh, 10 million barrels. Of, oil a day and I uh, agree that I'll only produce that even though my capacity might be uh, 15 million barrels a day so that would be cooperating and then or cheating and that it, and that would be I would go ahead and produce 15 million barrels a day even though we've kind of the t two firms who have agreed to share the market have agreed that I'll only produce 10 million, I actually cheat and produce 15. So each firm has a store chance to either cooperate or cheat. Um, and then we have what's called a payoff matrix. Let's see if I can do this. So we'll call this firm A can cooperate Let's uh, let's put cheat over here. They can cheat or can cooperate. And firm B can cooperate or cheat. And uh, actually, let me make firm B. Let's see, I'll call. So I'll put B's payoffs in orange, or profits in orange, and A's in yellow. All right, so let me go back to yellow, and we have four possible combinations. Let's say if everyone cooperates, um, every, A gets 10 million in profits, and B gets 10 million in profits. And let's say if they both cheat, uh, they drive the price down to uh, zero profit point. So if they cheat, B gets zero and A gets zero. I hope those are visible as different colors. This is supposed to be orange down here, up yellow there. Um, <coughs> if um, so, if A cheats, and B cooperates, then A does really well. A gets, let's say, fifteen million in profits, but B loses five. And then we get the reverse down here, that is, if B cheats, well, A sticks to his production quota, then B does very well, but A does poorly. It's negative 5. Okay, so what, uh, sorry, that's just a squiggle there. Um, and what we look for is a dominant strategy. So a dominant strategy
The dominant strategy for A would be whatever B does, A is better off. Okay, so let's say suppose B is going to if we B is going to cheat. If B is going to cheat, then if A cooperates, A loses five dollars. But if A cheats, they break even. So, uh, so it's if B is going to cheat, A should cheat. What about cooperation? Well, if B cooperates. A gets a big profit by cheating and a little bit less by cooperating. So again, the dominant strategy is to cheat. So in this, and now there isn't always a dominant strategy. Sometimes uh, you could structure these payoffs so that it's not clear, so that uh, the strategy that works if the other guy cheats is actually the wrong strategy if the other guy cooperates. But in this case, I've put together a matrix in which the dominant strategy for A is to cheat, and guess what the dominant strategy for B is? It's also to cheat. That is, regardless of what A does, B is better off cheating. So what that says is that the outcome of this game is likely to be both players cheat. That is, so that what that means is you cannot... that. I won't say you cannot enforce, well, I'll say cannot enforce a cartel. That is, maybe you could, but if, if, these, are the, if these are the payoffs, it would be very difficult to uh, enforce a cartel. There's too much incentive for people to cheat. So it, you would have to uh, really have some kind of uh, punishment. So I'll say you cannot enforce a cartel without a punishment mechanism. If everybody is free to do what's in their own interests, they're both going to gravitate toward cheating. So only if they can somehow punish each other for cheating can they get away from that cheat cheat equilibrium and get, and end up with which something which would make them both better off, of course maybe not the consumer better off, but make both oligopolists better off would be in the cooperate cooperate area but they end, but they uh, because of the incentives of the dominant strategy they both end up cheating generically <laughs> situations like this where the dominant strategy makes both players wor worse off so dominant strategy makes both worse off is called a prisoner's dilemma. And it's called that because the cases, and I probably won't write this out completely, uh, the choice is uh, confess and also at the same time rat on your part on your the other person. So there are two got two prisoners have been captured and the judge gives them the choice of confess or don't confess. And when they confess <coughs> if you confess you rat on your partner also. Con uh, confess don't confess. So if they can both not confess, if they can end up here, then they'll both get off. Uh, if they both confess, they will each serve a short term. If one confesses and the other doesn't confess, the one who confesses gets off, gets, sorry, um, yeah, gets off. The judge is going to be nice to him, but because he's ratted on the uh, the other prisoner the other prisoner is going to have a long term so the 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 non confessor gets a long term
So the prisoners would like to end up here, not confess, not conf neither of them confessing, but because of the relative uh, payoffs, and I, I can spell the, I can spell these out more carefully. It'll, you can set it up so that they actually will both confess because uh, each one, given the uh, regardless of what the other one does, uh, each one is better off confessing than not confessing. So that's why it's historically this is called the prisoner's dilemma. But the important thing is to really understand it in, back here in the context of uh, a duopoly uh, trying to decide whether to uh, cheat on a, an agreement to uh, hold back to a production quota or whether to produce beyond the quota. Um, and that's really the, the typical example, and it's an example used to suggest that uh, cartel arrangements will be unstable, that, pe that companies will not tend to hold to production quotas. So, so the claim is that OPEC, which was a, uh, attempted to rig the oil market in the 1970s, actually suffered from a lot of cheating uh, and that they could, were not able to sustain their cartel very well. So I think that's, uh, I'll pretty much leave it there, just point out that these game theory sorts of questions, uh, and being able to understand these payoff matrices, uh, they've tended to come up a lot in recent years on the AP, so make sure you understand it.